It's taken two months, but Atomic is finally unlockable, and man, you already know I was determined to unlock this before I left for my vacation. We'll have this guide and more coming in the near future for camo help and tips, but after completing the grind, I figured I'd share my thoughts and opinions with you on this journey that is pain, suffering, and all of that, but man, does it feel good when you're at the finish line. So that said, today is going to be a complete and ultimate guide to unlocking atomic camo within Vanguard. With that said, this is a huge project here, so do me a favor, drop a like on the video and share with someone who may need some help or some tips on their grind. I'd seriously love to help out as many of you as possible. So if it helps you out in any way, shape or form, drop a like as well. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay updated with all things Vanguard, Warzone, and anything Call of Duty related. We're on the road to half a million subscribers here this year. So if you're part of that nearly 70% viewers who are not subscribed, I'd love to have you. And finally, my friends over at G Fuel have bumped up Code Espresso to 30% off your entire order this weekend. And I gotta say, man, grinding as much as I did in the last two weeks to try and fit this in before my vacation, they helped fuel this grind big time. If you wanna check that out for yourself, links in the description below. That said, let's jump right into it. So let's start out with the first notable bits of information. Firstly, on the challenge side of Atomic Camo, the challenges themselves aren't necessarily hard, but they're mostly just tedious and sometimes downright annoying. I mean, snipers are very slow, very tedious, and you have 600 long shots you have to do. So not really long, but just taking a long time and putting up with that, having the patience for it. To me, I think the truly biggest hurdle of the camo grind is ranking up every weapon fully to unlock each of the challenges. Primaries go to level 70, secondaries go to level 60. Now, naturally, the best time to take advantage of these four weapon leveling is during double weapon XP events. Right now, we don't have one going on, but we've seen them happen quite often here within Vanguard, so would not be surprised if we see them again if you need to rank up something for yourself. Secondly, when entering into the camo grind, take note that getting diamond for each category only requires the base number of weapons to be completed with gold camo per weapon category. So as the year goes on, you can pick and choose what weapons you want to do, and we can already do that with melee weapons, which are arguably one of the most annoying, most tedious things here to do out of the camo grind. So just know that, for example, the game launched with seven assault rifles. Diamond only requires seven assault rifles to be completed with gold camo. So that means with eight right now, you only have to do seven. I ended up skipping the STG because that was bugged whenever I was doing assault rifles, gold, and diamond. So that was something that I kind of worked around that. Thirdly, before we jump into any specific tips, don't care about your KD or your stats, especially the more and more you get into the less favorable weapons. I straight up tanked my stats, man. It cost me about like 0.5 on my KD. I think that I started around the 2.0 mark, and right now I'm sitting around that 1.5 benchmark off the top of my head. It was pure pain, but now now I can actually play the game, so it's only up from here. Letting go of that sort of ego, that need to be the best in the lobby, it saves your sanity greatly. I'm always like that. I always want that competitive nature of I want to be the best in the game. And, well, obviously I'm not, but also letting go of that allowed me to not rage near as much as I would have if I was still trying to top frag every single game. But that said... Let's jump into the tips here. Firstly, if you haven't seen the Diamond Camo Guide, check it out here on the channel. We go a lot more in depth into the general challenge, the generic things like eliminations and all, but I wanna give you more and more of the troublesome challenges and tips for those here in this video. But for a quick refresher, covering all the bases, we will touch on them briefly. Eliminations, headshots, multi-kills, bloodthirsties, long-range kills, close-range kills. Those are kind of your standard across all of the weapon categories. The Wildcat challenges and beyond, that's where you get your classification and weapon-specific stuff. But for eliminations, just play the game, you'll get those as time progresses. Headshots, try and consciously aim for the headshots. Doing them earlier seriously saves you so much stress later on. Multi-kills, this is something that's considered a double killer higher, so you play anything like Shipment, DOS House, anything like that, you're going to get these just naturally. Bloodthirsties, five kill streaks in a game, but a little helpful pointer, especially your guns like snipers, and as we'll see in a couple of other challenges here, that final fifth kill, or what is asked of by the challenge, is the only one that really matters. You can get four kills with a Cooper Carbine, an STG, an MP40, and then that fifth one can be a sniper or a marksman rifle kill, and that will count to your bloodthirsties. So just bear that in mind, it's a nice little workaround. Long range kills, this varies depending on the weapon classification. Rifles, it's 38 meters. SMGs, it's 30. Shotguns, it's 12 meters. LMGs, 38. Marksman rifles, 38. Sniper rifles, 52 meters. Handguns and launchers are both 20 meters. So that's something that these are incredibly tedious. For rifles, that was probably the most tedious part here for me. Keep an eye out for big map blitz or things like that. And especially if you're using snipers, big map blitz is a lifesaver. 
I did all of mine without it, and it was pure torture. I probably wasted so much time lobby surfing for big maps, but that was something that I ended up getting. For maps that I found some success on, though, DOS House, mid-map for rifles in particular, rifles, SMGs, marksman rifles, things like that, everything but snipers, mid-map is great there. Demyansk, the rooftop to rooftop and beyond is a long shot. Desert Siege, each side lane is long shot material. Dome, balcony to balcony is long shot material for everything but sniper rifles. Sniper rifles, you can get long shots on dome, but you have to like situate yourself at the corner of a balcony and then like look down the stairs beyond B. So it's kind of finicky. It's not really the best spot, but you can do them there. Gavudu, basically the entire map. Hotel Royal, either the terrace side head glitches or the long hallway. And sub pens, there's a lot of great lines of sight by B, but also mid map can look into some spawn points as well. Now, kills without taking damage overall, that's something that only asks you of not taking damage from the enemy that you are shooting. So, if you're in a gunfight with somebody and you take some damage from another third party, that doesn't go against you, that doesn't negate that challenge tracking. So long as who you're shooting at doesn't shoot back at you or throw a grenade or do any damage to you, you are totally fine. So bear that in mind, that was one that kind of tripped some people up here from our diamond guide and also from what I've seen elsewhere. Now, as for rifles, the Itra Burst, that's probably the most annoying and tedious one here because it has two challenges that are just straight up evil. Firstly, the kills after recently aiming down sights, it seems to be a little bit hit or miss with how it tracks. The only surefire way that I found that counted was if I quickly ADS and hit a one burst headshot, which with the build that you're required to end up using, that's the only way you'll get a one burst with no vital in the mix. But just make sure that you're ADSing and firing as fast as you can, and you'll make some progress on it. Secondly, the hip fire kills. This honestly is just done best in hardcore shipment because you have a 12 round mag, so three bursts and you have to hip fire. It's kind of hell, not going to lie to you, but that's something that you can get done relatively quickly. Now, SMGs, long shots, that's probably the most tedious thing here with this. Do them in hardcore and on all the maps we just mentioned. LMGs, fairly straightforward. The long shots, again, are kind of a pain in the behind, but that's about it. For hip fire, I jump into hardcore shipment and you'll get them in no time. Bullet penetration kills, though, I'm going to break this down a little bit further here because we see this with, I just want to say the bar. There might actually be another rifle here that I'm just forgetting off the top of my head that has bullet penetration requirements as well. But bullet penetration locations, I found a few that are perfect for farming. On shipment, of course, you have those corner crates from A or C. Both of those can easily be wall banged and have a few spawns that if you're in hardcore should easily be able to take people out. Now, I think there's a clip of me getting like two triple collats or something like that while I was doing my M1 Garand of all guns. So it's definitely something that's easy to rack up. Play hardcore and you will get that in absolutely no time. DOS House, with the removal of the tire jump up spot, I've been kind of liking the Seaside Dom overlooking B. If you have piercing vision, you can wait until someone peeks the A side hallway leading to B, and then you'll be able to shoot through the wall with the vision of them and take them out with ease. It's also insanely easy to shoot through those pillars there in your way, so you may not even have to worry about backing up and shooting through the wall. You could probably just do it there. One though that was really surprising to me that I really came to like was Hotel Royal. Now this map is really good for long shots, but while most of the map is destructible, the surprisingly most constant and easiest place to get a hold of was the mid bar jump up. That entire glass window breaks except the bottom corner hugging the wall. That is coded so that there's always a sliver of glass always there, and when you ADS on it, you can still see over the top of your vision if someone is coming from the kitchen or the other living quarters on the other side, and you can shoot right through it while also giving you some visual cover. In hardcore, this is an absurdly good spot to do since max it'll take like two shots to kill. Now, snipers, those were probably the biggest pain here that I had ranking these up and doing the challenges outside of like the Panzerfaust. The biggest thing that was a pain to me was the long shots. There's like 600 long shots required across all three snipers you'll need. Every one has an additional 100 long shots required. Now, if you can rank those up and then pair the long shots in tandem, doing two challenges at once, do so in order to double up and kill two birds with one stone. It was the most tedious and painful thing to go for when I did it, because again, I did it without big map blitz. So if you're not in a hurry, I'd honestly wait for big map blitz to make it easier for yourself. If not, Red Star, Gavudu, Desert Siege, maps like that are in the rotation every so often, but normal domination and modes alike, they're really only 12v12, so the action is much lower than if you're in big map blitz. So again, kind of take that into consideration. But for locations for long shots, Gavudu, Desert Siege, Red Star, and the likes, all of those offer great ones, but you need 52 meters of distance between you and that shot landing on an enemy for it to count as a long shot. So 
it's a substantially longer distance than that of other weapons like rifles, marksmen, and LMGs, all secondary in the length required that are only 38 meters. Now, if you can gain access to big map blitz again, I'd suggest it, but back spawns of Demyansk, taking out the tower or the rooftop players, or overlooking B end to end on ice side, those are great. One that honestly was pretty great for me was sub pen, surprisingly. There's a few locations here where you can mount some boxes on the B flag staircase overlooking the C spawn, either that right side hallway coming into B or actually in that drop down right below the C window, and that's a long shot. Now, I personally like the seaside jump ups too, where you can get on the little control room rooftops or the jump ups overlooking the balcony control room. You can look right into people's spawns and it's a very powerful position to have. Desert Siege, all of the side lanes are perfect. Gavudu, end to end is ideal, but you can do that even while slightly up the mid lane. Marksmans, they're kind of similar in the rule sets to the snipers here and what I'd suggest. The only thing is that some of these can be fully auto, like the G43. That thing kicks ass fully auto, as well as the long shots are categorically shorter, like we just mentioned, 38 meters instead of 52 meters. So you have a little bit more room to work with. Shotguns, pretty straightforward. Hardcore shipment or DOS house were lifesavers. I didn't really have too many problems with these ones. I think that they're, again, relatively straightforward, not really needing too much explanation. Melees, though, I know that I'm going to piss off some people by saying this, but do the knife and the katana or the sawtooth. I got diamond melees in like three to four hours by skipping the shield. If you did it, more power to you, and honest to God, you have my full respect. But if we're talking about efficiency, saving as much time as possible by doing this, utilize that rule that you only need the base amount of each weapon category. Seriously, there's no shame in saving hours of your time and your sanity. Now, launchers, man, this one, three of the four are kind of a cakewalk. They're just tedious. But we're going to break down these fully in a follow-up video here tomorrow, the day after. One of the days coming up here. But for those struggling with these weapons in particular, I want to break these down a little bit further instead of just having to take away from every other category in this video. But firstly, I'd say to toss them on your back with all your weapon classes and work on your other weapons at the same time to earn them passively. Like we said, the melees really don't take all that long if you do the knife and the katana or sawtooth. So you're not really going to lose out on a whole ton by just tossing on a launcher on your back. Long shots for the Mark 11 and the Panzer Fox are 20 meters, but unfortunately for the Panzerfaust, right now that only counts if it's a direct impact, to which I highly suggest going and playing hardcore DOS house and spam mid-map. I promise that'll work. I did the plunder method and got 11 long shots in two hours. I then went to DOS house. I got 12 in one game that was 10 minutes long. So it'll vary, but still, you get what I'm saying. It's way faster just spamming that. The Panzerfaust three streaks in one game challenge. Use the same tip that we talked about for Bloodthirsties and as what also applies to double and triple kills here. Use another gun to take out two UAVs before that third one, because the only thing that matters is that third streak destroyed. So destroy two UAVs with, I was using a DP-27 with armor piercing rounds, taking it out in no time. Then I came back and waited for a guard dog or a pack of dogs and took that out with my Panzerfaust. Now you can also do that with another UAV if you shoot it down with the Panzerfaust. Incredibly hard, but it is possible and it finally does track now if you do. Pistols, one word, hardcore. I did the majority of my camos for pistols and hardcore. For what it's worth, one shot most of the time, so that's always a plus. The only things that I found were kind of annoying were the wildcat challenges where it's kills after swapping to your secondary. So this, I was kind of just YYing around shipment and DOS house with a riot shield on my back. So that's something that I'd highly recommend. And the kills without taking damage, if you do this in core, you're going to have some problems. But in hardcore, that's incredibly easy because basically every kill you accumulate will go towards this. But that said, that is, I think, everything that I have here on deck for atomic camo and the stuff that tripped me up and that I want to make sure that you guys don't get tripped up as well. So that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. That's Atomic Camo. That is how I got it and how I best found the ways to do it. So hopefully this helped you out in some way, shape, or form. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is there any tip that you would add? Is there anything that you want to go for that maybe this helped you out in some way, shape, or form? Whatever the case, drop it down below. But if you enjoyed the video, again, you found it at all insightful. It helped you out in any way. Do be sure to drop a like. It really does help the video out. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to stay up with all things Vanguard, Warzone, and anything Call of Duty related, whether that be camo guides like this or news, updates, and information, we got you covered. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.